Well, hello and welcome back to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. We're going to talk some football here first. The Wildcat football team secured a victory over Trinity International University this past weekend up in the Chicagoland area. Joining us now is the head coach of the Wildcats, Jordan Langs. And coach, welcome back to the show. And uh, first of all, we always say it's never easy to win a college nope. football game, so congratulations on yeah, the win. Yeah, thanks. It was, it was a challenge. We had to go our first overnight game of the year. We had to go up to Chicago, adverse conditions. There's a lot of uh, just uh, outside variables that we had to really try to be in control of, and our kids did a really good job of, of preparing all week and showing up with some focused intensity. Well, it, you talked about the focus, the intensity, and I, I know that had to be critical because coming off of that, very emotional game up at St. Francis, you know, a tough loss where you played really well, had a chance to win. Um, you got to be happy with how your guys responded. Yeah, I mean, that's a big, you're coming off an emotional game, you know you've got three more big ones coming up that are going to determine a lot of things. So it, for us to be able to really stay focused in the moment mm -hmm. and really think about giving our best daily is what we really preached. And our kids took heart, heart to that, and they showed up with, uh, ready to play a football game they knew it was going to be difficult in a lot of ways, uh, a lot of different ways, and that's a really good sign of a championship culture, and I was really proud of them. With the weather conditions, and we saw it really throughout the Midwest on Saturday, you know, a lot of football games played in, in torrential downpours and, and wind uh, conditions that were less than ideal. Uh, you would think you have to run the football in that kind of game, and you guys did run the football well, but... Zach Blair had a career day with four touchdowns, uh, four touchdowns, I think three of them through the air. Yeah, well, the forecast, we, we had a feeling that the forecast was going to give us dry for the first quarter and a half okay. or so. So we decided we won the toss, we received it so we could start playing with the ball right away mm -hmm. that was dry. And we did that. We executed on our, our passing plays and we got up early. And then that, sure enough, towards the end of the second quarter, the rain started to come in and we played in, in a monsoon the second half. So at that point, we ended up really <laughs> focused on running the ball and uh, our defense came up, scored on defense again. Mm -hmm. uh, special teams uh, came up, scored on special teams again. So all those things combined, that's how good teams kind of get on top and bury, uh, bury some of those other teams. So it was good for us to kind of play together, play as a team, and take advantage of that. You know, you, you're talking again about kind of all phases of the game. Special teams, it sounds like they were solid again. Uh, ben Von Gunten, nine for nine. Uh, excuse me, you're perfect from the PATs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Taking a look at some highlights here, and, and you can see <laughs> uh, not a lot of people showing up uh, over there just because of... Uh, just but really, really actually is pretty cool. We probably out-attendance them. Uh, our, our fans came and our parents mm -hmm. traveled from all over the place yeah. and probably had a few more fans than they did, so that was really cool to see. Uh, cool to see some of the young running backs. Right. Jesse Deggle had a great day. Wade Phillips had a great day. We gave Devani a few touches, but we, we tried to keep him safe, and those guys took advantage of it. Varshawn came in late and ran hard, and... Um, wide receivers in the block game. By this point, we kind of really fell into our mm -hmm. run game and wanted to stay on it, and our guys took pride in that and, and uh, put it in the zone a few times. Well, it was 21 to nothing after the first quarter. Mm -hmm. 42 to nothing at the end of, or at halftime. Um, sometimes it's easy for teams to maybe lose their focus, lose their intensity, but I don't, it sounds like you guys did a good job in the second half. Staying, staying on task. Well, it was. I was really proud of them. We came out in the first series, and I could tell by the intensity of our players that they they were taking it seriously, and they and they want you were using it to get better. Um, and guys were flying around. It wasn't it wasn't uh, a vacation. It wasn't you know sometimes when you go over overnight with a young team, you worry about that. Um, but our kids treated it like a business trip and, and did what they were supposed to do. And the defense pitched the shutout. There you see the sack there, but. That, I know defenses take a lot of pride in that. Yeah, and that's really hard to do. Yeah. Um, even in a team where, you, where you're better than, and significantly so, to still hold people to zero points is difficult. And then down the stretch, we started to give the ball away a little bit, and they were starting to threaten. Um, but our guys did a nice job. Defensive line played well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, like I said, we scored again on, on defense. So those guys were having a good time. It was kind of old school football in the mud, in the grass, in the rain. I would say probably 85% of our kids have never played on grass before, <laughs> um, which is odd. Um, it is strange. So this is this is Josh Fusco yeah. scoring the ball again. This is, his, I think, his second or third yeah. defensive score in the year. So that was fun. Well, and, and, and I was going to mention the turnover battle. You guys won that handily. You created four turnovers. You, you did turn it over once yourself. But uh, 
Again, another good sign there for the defense. Yeah, it was good. And securing the ball was going to be really hard in that rain, and they, they struggled with it. We took advantage of it. And then down the stretch, all of our punt snaps and all of our field goal snaps, for us to stay perfect on mm -hmm. PATs, and mm -hmm. Benny put a field goal in is a big deal. Um, so, yeah, it was, I was really proud of our kids overall, their execution of it. Kids stayed into it, stayed focused, and were encouraging. The final score, 66 to nothing. And so now uh, um, you get to move on, and you head into – Kind of the, the home stretch of the season, if you will. Um, boy, it doesn't, uh, doesn't look to be like an easy home stretch. No, not, so, not, not at all. Sienna um, Heights at home, Marion at home, and then Concordia on the road. Three of the best teams in the conference. Anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a formidable task coming up, mm -hmm. but, but it's an attainable one. We, mm -hmm. we show what we're, we were made of and mm -hmm. what our, our best is versus Fort Wayne um, up there. So Sienna, Sienna Marion, and Concordia are going to be very mm -hmm. similar teams. And... Uh, with Siena beating St. Francis this past weekend, we right. are now in control of our, our destiny in, in the playoff picture and the, in the conference picture. So we're really focused on what it takes each week to win and understanding how that can uh, add to our long-term goal. When you look at Siena Heights, um, is is there a key to, to, to coming up on the with a W against that team, or what what's their strength and what do you have to stop? They are an elite defensive team, um, and they they put their whole whole team on the back of their defense, and that's mm -hmm. how they beat St. Francis. They, they'll eliminate possessions on offense. They'll slow it down. They're, gonna, they, they're good in the run game. They're elite on defense. They're solid on special teams, and they're going to they're gonna be okay winning, winning games 14 to 10. Mm -hmm. And they've done that all year long and consistently. It's not a fluke. It's who they are. Um, so we're, we're going to have to stay on schedule. We've got to take advantage of our offensive possessions because they'll be limited. Um, and then defensively, we got to stop the run game, and that's going to be important. And then stay uh, positive on special teams and not eliminate negative plays. All right. Well, Coach, once again, congratulations on the victory and another one in the conference or a crossover game at least. Uh, but, boy, good luck down the stretch here. Yeah, it'll be fun. All right. As we mentioned, Wildcat football team will be back home November the 2nd as they take on Siena Heights. That game is a noon kickoff at Wildcat Stadium. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at the men's basketball performance against Aquinas this past weekend. So don't go away. We'll be right back in Wildcat Week. And welcome back to Wildcat Week. Well, the men's basketball team is 3-1 as they have opened up their season. This past weekend, the Wildcats hosted Cornerstone and Quinas as part of the Crossroads League WAC Challenge. Head coach Greg, Jonago, <laughs> Greg Tonigal joins us now to break down the recent <clears throat> success. I've only been saying Greg Tonigal for, what, 15 years. Man, you forget. i got to mess it up You forget one, your right? best friend so easily. You know? <laughs> well, it is kind of shocking for me to say three and one to, to think it's not Halloween yet and you've had four games on your uh, belt. Normally this corner, uh, the, the league challenge, between the Crossroads League and and uh, the WAC is kind of the opening. Yeah. Uh, but you had the two games on the road. I just want to ask you really quick about that kind of thinking that goes in going up to Canada, those early games, and what what that does for you. Yeah, it was an awesome trip. Um, our guys labeled that as one of the best trips they've, we've taken. It was just unique um, going to a foreign country, uh, going to Niagara Falls, spending time in Toronto. So it afforded us this time to, to get together and build team because so much of the basketball – um, statistics are driven through relationships mm -hmm. and when you can get away and you can just be together and you can really pursue something uh, bigger than yourself I think um, you see it play out over time so that's what that trip was for it was obviously we were going to get some games mm -hmm. and some on-court experience which played which was pivotal um, mm -hmm. for us because we played some good teams up mm -hmm. there two really high level teams but at the same time we grew as a team and we began to gel together faster than we would have mm -hmm. I want to ask you about you know the, the system in Canada is different, uh, but especially in Ontario, <clears throat> around the Toronto uh, region, basketball is huge, and there's some really good talent up there. Yeah, it's, it's a really popular up there. Um, you know, you're seeing some guys in the NBA that are obviously from Canada now, R.J. Barrett mm -hmm. and uh, Wig, Andrew Wiggins. So it, it's popular, um, but there's a great amount of athleticism is what we ran into. I mean, we played some athletes, and... We played FIBA rules, which one of the major changes, 24-second shot clock. Mm -hmm. So by the time we got it across, got pressured, it was time to take a shot. Yeah. And, and that was a little shock to the system. But it, I think it gave us a sense of urgency coming back. Like, we gotta, we got to tidy up some things offensively mm -hmm. 
you know, if we're going to compete. And uh, when we came home, uh, we were ready to play, I think, yeah. what you saw when we tipped up versus Cornerstone. Yeah, we're going to uh, see some <clears throat> highlights here in just a second of the Aquinas game, and we'll talk about that. But really quick, in, that, in the Cornerstone matchup before this, um, you guys were on fire offensively. But what I thought was even more impressive and what translated or followed through into the Aquinas game is how you guys play defensively. You have to be happy with that defensive effort. Yeah, you know, I would say right now our defense is, is on par or slightly ahead of our offense, which is pretty rare this time of year. Usually it's the other way around, but it starts up front with our guards. We've, we've got a good amount of quickness and a, our ability to pressure the ball starts everything. And Isaiah Payton did a great mm -hmm. job in this Aquinas game, picking up early, pressuring, and uh, Noah Smith is another guard that's got that capability also. You know, you scored 94 against Cornerstone, and that was maybe the the marquee matchup, maybe uh, in some regards, because uh, uh, they're you know, a perennial national championship contender, and we've played them so many times over the years, and it's been a great matchup. So I don't know if there was a letdown at all in the second game, but Aquinas, very physical team, and, and they did kind of slow it down, at least initially, on you guys. And, and it was a different ball game. Yeah, I mean, the night before, they had Spring Arbor on the ropes. They lost yeah. by uh, just a couple to the, the national champions. And we knew coming in they were going to play us like that also. So they played physical. They tried mm -hmm. to take you out of rhythm. And the first half, they did. I thought they yeah. played harder than us in the first half. We, we didn't have that same look that we came out against Cornerstone. Well, let's talk more about this game. And you saw Kyle Mangus find a, a Noah Smith there. But uh, in this game, Kyle had 20 to follow up on his 29 from the night before. But uh, in the first game, he almost had a triple-double. Uh, but really good job. I think Kyle leading the way and, and, and sharing the basketball. Great, great <clears throat> movement and passing. And then, speaking of defense, I, I really like this Noah Smith, what he does for you guys defensively. Noah's a special kid. He's got a very high basketball IQ. He's always one step ahead, uh, whether that's on the offensive end or on the defensive end. And you're going to see a lot more Noah mm -hmm. in the future. Well, and, you know, sometimes, uh, I don't know, no one had maybe, what, 12 points in, in this Aquinas game, but you don't have to score a lot to make a contribution. If you can, if you can lead a team defensively, um, those kind of guys are incredibly invaluable. Yeah, and we constantly preach defense, but when you get a kid who comes in who really values that, and that's kind of his basketball identity, pretty pleased with that. Another thing I wanted to ask was about your bench. We just saw Michael Thompson, the third, get the layup there. Um, uh, we know what Kyle is going to do, and, and uh, I think Seth is certainly taking a step up, but your bench is, was solid throughout. I think you went, what, 11 deep against Cornerstone, and everyone contributed. Yeah, 11 deep in meaningful minutes you know, says a lot, and we want to continue to be deep and continue to have, give guys opportunities to earn more playing time. What a, an assist that was, I think, from Trevor Harrell to Michael Thompson, the third going down the floor, but a great play. But I, I loved it when Trevor came in, um, did a great job running the, the team and, and, and just picking up where the other guys left off. Trevor did a great job. and He's a senior. Uh, trust him. He really does put in the work and the preparation every single day. Uh, he's got the respect of his teammates, so it was great to see him get out there and make some plays. There he is once again with the penetration and left it there for Luke Stevens. Um, wanted to talk, haven't talked much about Seth Maxwell, but um, he looks stronger and he looks more confident. I would definitely agree with that. And I think the weight room gave him the confidence. Mm -hmm. he, he spent a lot of time this summer putting on weight, building that strength, because he was stepping into a new role yeah. this year. And I think he knew, obviously, he knew that. And uh, he's prepared himself well. Another uh, thing um, my partner during the broadcast, Perry Frank, mentioned uh, a couple times we saw, you guys had a four-guard offense with maybe a small four, Jonathan Ponzu uh, in there. A a and you went small at <clears> times, <throat> but uh, you've got, you got some, uh, some options, and you, yeah. got, you can go a variety of different ways. Yeah, and we're still figuring that out. Um, we're trying a lot of different combinations, and maybe it, it will be a situation where Certain games call for us to go mm -hmm. small. Certain games call for us to go big. But uh, I do like the versatility that we have with this team. So with the wins, uh, you guys are three and one. Um, you have a week to prepare for the uh, Caleb Dimmick Memorial tur uh, Tournament, and uh, um, you, you put together a whale of a schedule <laughs> because another top twenty team comes to town in Union. Of course, they won a national championship just a couple years ago. Um, 
So Friday night, Union, a very good team. Be I, I assume knowing Union, they're going to be athletic. They're going to get up and down the floor. Uh, another test for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we love playing good teams early on. Mm -hmm. We, we want to get exposed because it's going to help us in practice. But Lincoln, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this team on Saturday is really good. They're, yeah. they're formerly a JUCO program okay. who won national championships and has since uh, transitioned into the NEI, and, and they are the real deal. So back-to-back you know, -to -back tough games this weekend. Well, honestly, I had it in my notes, but I like Lincoln College, I wasn't really familiar with it. There used to be Lincoln Christian, I yeah. think, in Illinois, or Lincoln Memorial down in Tennessee, and I knew it wasn't either one of those two teams. But, um, and of course, it's, that's always a special weekend anyways. It's good to see Dave and Kristen back in town and, and uh, the memory, uh, to remember the legacy yeah. of Caleb Dimmick. Obviously, we're, we're, we want to recognize Caleb and what, what a – what an outstanding young man he was. Obviously, left this earth too soon, but the legacy that he left behind continues to impact um, thousands of people, and uh, we want to make sure that story is told. All right. Well, Coach, again, congratulations on a couple wins, and we'll see you Friday night in Lucky Arena as the Wildcats take on the Union. Sounds good. Should be a fun one. Well, the men's basketball team, as we said, back in action uh, November the 1st. That's game against Union in the Caleb Dimmick Memorial Classic will be, note this, a 6 p.m. start. Not 6, uh, not 7, but a 6 p.m. start. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will bring us the weight breakdown and we'll talk with some swimmers about the pro program's first ever home meet. And welcome back to Wildcat Week. Now we send it over to Michaela For Woodfork with this week's breakdown. Thanks, Roger. The football team went up against Trinity International down in Illinois. They came back home with an amazing 66-0 victory over them. The volleyball team is still going strong. They went up against St. Xavier and won in three straight games. The first game ended in 25-23, the second game 25-11, and the third 25-21. The women's soccer team beat Goshen 1-0. Lauren Turner made the Wildcats' first and only goal in the 53rd minute. The men also faced Goshen and won. They beat them 4-1. Cade Binkard and Philip Basara scoring for the Wildcats in the first period, and Glauber Oliveira and C.J. Strasser scored in the second period. Women's golf spent two days at the Sultan's Run Golf Course. They started day one in first place and kept that standing all the way until the end of day two. This was their second straight win. And finally, the men's basketball team has been doing great as they beat Aquinas College. The first half of the game ended closely with the Wildcats up by nine, but whatever Coach Tonegal said to them in the locker room sure gave them a kick in the butt. They came back second half dominating and ended up winning 93-66. to Well, that's all I have for you this week for the breakdown. Back to you, Roger. Well, thank you so much, Michaela. The Wildcats swimming team hosted their first home meet ever this past weekend. Joining us now from the team is Lindsay Schrader. Schroeder. Schroeder. Excuse me, Lindsay. And I'm going to get it right the first time. <laughs> Natalie Vasilakis. Yeah, close. Hey, close. <laughs> close. close enough, right? Say it for us. Vasilakis. Very Greek, I'm assuming. Yes, very. Awesome. All right. Well, as we said, the first swim meet that uh, ever at home this uh, last Friday. But first, I want to get a chance to know you guys. So I'll start with you, Natalie. Just kind of tell us where you're from, uh, maybe what you're studying. How'd you hear about IW and, and what do you swim? Well, I'm Natalie Vasilakis and I'm from Newport Ritchie, Florida. So pretty far away from IWU. Mm -hmm. I heard about it through like some friends and mm -hmm. everything. And I heard you guys were having a swim team because it's fairly new. And here I'm studying uh, criminal justice and psychology, so I'm a double major. So criminal justice, psychology, do you have maybe a career path in mind or something you'd like to do someday with I'm, that? I'm also pursuing a child advocacy certificate, okay. so hopefully something with like children and uh, helping in that area. Awesome. What about you, Lindsay? Where, where do you hail from? Yep, so I'm from Winchester, Indiana, mm -hmm. about an hour away from here. And um, I'm studying exercise science, and I swim 100 fly and like the sprint freeze. So I know a little bit about your story, uh, Lindsay, in that Winchester, I don't believe, has a high school swim team, does no, it? No, no. So, and that's one of the things about swimming. We know about swimmers. They're really dedicated to their sport, and they'll find a way to find a pool and, mm -hmm. and get uh, laps and stuff like that. So how did you navigate that through high school? Yeah, so 
I was like the swim team and my mom was my coach. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we just traveled to Muncie Burris okay. and I swam with them, but for Winchester. When I went to meets, I would be representing my high school. And you probably, probably with your parents logged incredible uh, hours and miles <laughs> when you were younger, going to clubs and things like yes, that. Yes, yep, because we drove to Muncie, which is about 45 minutes away from my house. So. I, Natalie, I was going to ask you, uh, I know of talking to other swimmers who are from Florida, uh, Hallie Hunt's from Florida, yeah. and, and it's more common down in Florida to be swimming outdoors in outdoor pools, and mm -hmm. up here, of course, you're almost exclu you're exclusively indoors, mm -hmm. but a little differences in different parts of the country, aren't there? Yeah, I definitely had to adapt to swimming indoors. Like, we have one indoor pool close to me, and it's like mm -hmm. a big deal when we get to go swim at the indoor pool. Mm -hmm. So coming here, and like, all the pools are indoors, I'm like, oh my goodness, where's the sun? You know what I mean? <laughs> I definitely lost my tan and everything, but yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you guys, I'll ask you both, though, um, third year of the program, every meet, Every meet has been on the road, right? Uh, you've been going. What was it like, though, to finally say, hey, we get to swim at home in front of some of our friends and some of our fans, and we'll take a look at some of uh, 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 the footage from that. But it had to be fun to be at, at home in front of some of your, 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 your friends and family and stuff Oh, like it that. was crazy. Yeah, it was just I such just, a surreal. Oh, go ahead. No, I just didn't even feel like it was, I was there. I was like, really? This is happening right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was such a surreal moment just mm -hmm. because we've, I felt like we've talked about it for so long mm -hmm. and it's always been like a goal. And then just to be there, we're like, oh my gosh, this is where we practice. And now we get to like swim me and compete here. So, yeah. And uh, we actually had, I think, uh, 400 people show up, added some seats and things yeah. like yeah. that. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, swimming, Lindsay talked a little bit about this a bit of an individual sport, but still within the team structure. And, and uh, um, it's one of those things where, you know, everyone's aware of their personal times and they have mm -hmm. personal goals and things like that. But at the same time, you know, you're trying to score points for your team and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, it does take someone who really is motivated, like internally a lot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. What keeps you motivated with swimming? Because it's a, it's insane amount of yardage and things like that. <laughs> oh gosh, just knowing, probably just trying to like stay focused and mm -hmm. keep pushing towards the end goal, mm -hmm. which is obviously to make a national cut. Mm -hmm. So I just keep thinking about what can I do better now and earlier so mm -hmm. I can meet that end goal. And, and, and kind of similar, I would think, when we talk to, let's say, Coach Foss in cross country, it's so early in the season Times are important, mm -hmm. but they're, that's not the important thing. The important thing is how are you progressing, how are you building for three, four months down the road to be peaking at the right time of year. Right. It takes a lot of patience, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I would think. And, and, and so yeah. uh, let me ask you this, Natalie. Your season is really long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you have meets in the fall. Uh, you have a big meet up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where, where that – time becomes a little bit more mm -hmm. important there but what do you do then you have the break during Christmas so you go home you mm -hmm. have you have to do things in the pool on your own I'm assuming yeah, yeah. I just kind of think of it because you can't really look at the big picture because then you'll get overwhelmed mm. and there's like uh, bumps through everything there's like highs and lows and I just kind of take it one day at a time like every single day in the pool is a new day because mm -hmm. you're not always going to do your best times in practice or at meets and there's always going to be like challenge that you come across so I just think like coming into each day like with a new perspective and a positive attitude if you don't have a positive attitude mm -hmm. and you don't want to be there then it just makes everything <laughs> so much harder you mm -hmm. have to and some days you don't want to be there and you just have to convince yourself that that future goal and just look ahead mm -hmm. but also like stay in the moment of where you are yeah. so um, obviously Getting to nationals is a goal. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. for everyone. So you can either qualify as an individual mm -hmm. or on relay. On so relay. yeah, um, um, relay's got to be a lot of fun though too. Yeah, <laughs> those are really fun. Um, what do you, what relays do you swim in? Um, I am a distance swimmer, so oh, okay. I think the eight free relay is about where I do the yeah. Do you swim the mile? I do. I swim the mile, the 500, and then the 200 is a treat because it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the shortest. Lindsay, would you ever want to swim a mile? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, I my don't goodness. think I ever have. <laughs> it, 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 but well, how important is that for the team to have people who will go out there and swim that? Because it's pretty intense, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I just think it's more honestly the mile. It's a mental game. Mm. Like it's anyone could do it, but it's just learning how to stay focused. Like for me, I honestly like do math in my head. Oh, so yeah. I look at clocks and I do the splits yeah. in my head just to keep me present in the moment. Because if you wander off, like your mind wanders off then you won't be able to like push yourself to your best ability. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I admire you for doing it. <laughs> yeah. Thank so, you. It's awesome. Well, guys, thanks for coming in, talking a little bit about swim. Thank and, uh, you. Good luck this next weekend at Bethel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bye. super excited. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot. Well, as you said, Wildcat Swim will be back in action November the 2nd at Bethel. They'll be taking on the pods as, long, as well as DePaul. That meet starts at 2 p.m. Well, that is all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you'd like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com, and there you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that's WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's WIWTV. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week.